been quite a while, but we're back. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Saturday Night Horror. It's been a few months since we've done this, so uh, let's see if I remember what the heck I'm doing. Now, before we get started, I know there's some of you that have been watching the show for years and years. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Beefcake, you've already done two episodes of Saturday Night Horror dedicated to Jason Takes Manhattan. And you're correct. And tonight will be three. Whenever I take a break from Saturday Night Horror, whenever I decide to come back, my go-to movie is Jason Takes Manhattan. And what I'm about to say, I guarantee you this will be the only time you ever hear someone say this. I'll probably be the only person in the world to ever say this. Jason Takes Manhattan is my favorite horror movie of all time. Yes, you heard that correctly. <laughs> it's also the very first horror movie I ever watched. Uh, this is what made me a horror movie fan. This is what got, got me into horror films. So I love it, man. It's, it's a special movie to me. And in all honesty, I could watch Jason Takes Manhattan every Saturday night and never get tired of it, ever. So yeah, for the return of Saturday Night Horror tonight, we're going to be watching Jason Takes Manhattan. This is going to be a longer episode than usual. Um, last couple of episodes I did were around 10 to 13 minutes. This one might be a little bit longer because we're going to talk quite a bit and we'll be in the kitchen for a little bit as well. That's right. We're back in the kitchen. But yeah, before we even get started, let's have a story time. And this is the part where people turn the video off that have the attention spans of rocks. That's fine. <laughs> but Jason Takes Manhattan, like I said, this is the first horror movie I ever watched. And I never watched it until around 94, possibly 95. I used to be scared to death of horror movies. I wanted nothing to do with them. I didn't want to watch them. I didn't even want to hear about them. The first time I ever saw anything that had to do with Jason Voorhees was when I was living in Italy as a kid. They had a video rental store, maybe about 10 minutes from the apartment we were living at. And I remember to, uh, to get to the video games, you had to go through their horror section, which was near the back of the store. And I will never forget their horror section because it smelled like wet wood and ass. Um, strange combination, but that's what it smelled like. And in this horror section, they had all the Friday the 13th. For some reason, Friday the 13th uh, VHS covers were the only ones they had out so we could see the actual cover. And the Jason, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan was always turned around backwards. So you see a couple scenes from the movie. And they would have the scene where he's reaching through the window with the ship and grabbing Rennie. And for some reason, that scared the living hell out of me every time I saw it. I will go through the horror section kind of like this after that. But I was terrified of horror movies, and Jason was a big reason why. Now, the first time I ever seen this movie, like I said, 94, possibly 95, it was a little after 3 in the morning. And I remember it vividly because, for some reason, I had taken my sheets and made a sheet for it. <laughs> I was like 12 or 13 years old, and I made a sheet for it, which is embarrassing enough. Turned on the TV because I couldn't sleep, flipped through the channels, and I caught it near the end where Jason is chasing Rennie and uh, whatever dude's name is, I can't remember, Scott maybe, I don't know, Rennie and her boyfriend through the sewers, and it was right before the part where Rennie throws a toxic waste in his face. So I turn it on, she throws the waste in his face, he turns off his mask, or he uh, takes off his mask. That's the first time, that first glimpse I ever saw Jason unmasked, the, that was the very first clip of a Friday the 13th movie I ever watched and I loved it. <laughs> I wanted to see what happened. So I actually got the VHS tape, watched the whole movie, and the rest is history. So Jason Takes Manhattan, definitely a special movie to me. Uh, like I said, very first horror movie I ever saw. So it's ever since that night, this has been my favorite horror movie. Nothing has ever come close to taking that spot away. So yeah, let's talk about Jason Takes Manhattan. This, uh, this movie does not get a lot of love. A lot of uh, Friday the 13th fans really despise this one. And their main gripe is that the title of the movie is Jason Takes Manhattan, but Jason's mostly on a ship. The, hour, the movie's an hour and 40 minutes long. One hour of that, they're on a ship. And the last 40 minutes, they're in New York. So, I mean, yeah, mostly on the ship, but I mean, it's only 20 minutes longer than he was in New York. 
And another thing is, uh, they really couldn't film too much in New York because the budget wouldn't allow it. They had, they had big plans for this. They wanted a fight scene between Jason and one of the characters, Julius, in the middle of Madison Square Garden in a boxing ring. They wanted to go to the Statue of Liberty. They, they had grand plans for this. Uh, unfortunately, the budget wouldn't allow it. So a lot of fans really crap on it. I enjoy it. First of all, being on the ship in that claustrophobic setting, it, it, it's just unsettling to me makes for a great horror film and then the scenes when they were in New York which uh, they weren't all those scenes were not in New York they filmed some of them in Vancouver kinda of made it seem like it was New York but you get what I'm saying I love those scenes too so I mean I love the movie definitely not the best in the franchise but it's fun man it's a fun movie so that's gonna be our movie tonight also uh, my plan was to cook but someone decided to order Domino's. And folks, let me tell you something. I'm a simple man, but I'm not a stupid man. If someone offers to pay for Domino's, I'm taking that deal every single time. So we got Domino's for dinner. We're gonna go in the kitchen and show you what I got. I also decided to make some cookies. Now I did these cookies yesterday, Friday afternoon, because I just wanted to get them done ahead of time. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go to the kitchen I'm going to show you how the cookies were made, and after that, show you the pizza. Go out in the front room, turn the lights off, watch this movie, and we'll come back and talk about it. So let's go out to the kitchen, let's make some cookies. Alright everyone, how's it going? It is Friday afternoon. You can tell I haven't shaved yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this part I wanted to get done a day in advance because it's time consuming. It's going to take a little while. So we're going to make the pumpkin spice chip cookies today. So without further ado, man, let's just get right into it. Let me switch this camera around here. There we go. All right. Here are our ingredients. Butter, vanilla, eggs, pumpkin spice chips, salt, baking soda, sugar, brown sugar, and flour and yes I did label these containers and the reason I labeled them is because one morning for whatever reason I mistook the flour for pancake mix let's just say there was a lot of flour wasted until I figured out what the hell was going on only I can do that but yeah those are ingredients for our pumpkin chip or pumpkin spice chip cookies so let's get this started man all right, first thing we got to do is mix up our sugar, our butter, our vanilla, and our eggs. And I'm going to put them in this bowl. I'm going to keep the camera right here like it is because this is as high as this tripod will go. I'm going to put everything in here, and then we'll film from an above uh, bird's eye view, if you will. So first things first, put the sugar in there. Yes, sir. Now this is a cup of butter. One stick is half a cup, so we got to use two sticks of room temperature butter. Always take your butter out the day before. I've learned through the years, and thank you to Mama Beefcake for teaching me that as well. Because if you get it right out of the fridge, that butter is going to be hard. It's not going to mix well at all, and it's just going to be a mess. All right, let's get our vanilla here. Our vanilla is two teaspoons. There's one. Oops. That probably ended up being two and a half. Now this is the first time I've ever used this mixer before. I usually use an electric hand mixer, so I'm excited about this, man. And two eggs. There's one. And here's two right here. Like I said, man, this is the first time let me using this. Let me rinse my hands off. Get that egg yolk off of there real quick. All right. So, give me a second, and we'll look at this being mixed up. All right. Here we go. Moment of truth. I want to start off real slow because I don't know if I. 
I don't know if this is going to splash everything around if I turn it up real fast. That is awesome. All right, there it is, man. This thing is badass. I like this. This thing is awesome. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add our dry ingredients to that. So, give me a minute and we'll get that done. Alright, first up is our brown sugar. So we'll dump that in. Alright. Alright, next up is baking soda. We're using one teaspoon of that. So there our baking soda. Alright up next is salt and we're using one and a half teaspoons there. So there's one and I just dropped salt all over the floor and a half. last but not least is our flour and when I use the electric hand mixer I add a little bit of flour in it at a time so I'm gonna do the same here although I probably could add all of it so yeah give me a minute and we'll get a bird's eye view of the mixing all right we've got a little bit of the flour in there so oh no <laughs> we went too fast it's all right, we'll clean it up. <laughs> okay, so yeah, while it was mixing, I cleaned up my mess. So that's all mixed up. I might add a little bit more flour that doesn't look real packed. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. So let's go ahead and dump our pumpkin spice chips in there and see what happens. We're going to mix the chips in with that dough. Alright, so the dough is actually packed pretty well. I just tried some. It was really good. We've dumped a small bag of pumpkin spice chips in there. Let's mix it up. Cover your ears. Everything is mixed up, the dough, the pumpkin spice chips. I'll tell you what, man, this thing is awesome. Uh, I'm never using an electric hand mixer again. <laughs> so we're going to get all the dough off of this right here. We're going to roll the dough up in balls, put them on a cookie sheet, and we're going to bake them. So for you, we'll be back right in a second. For me, it'll be quite a few minutes. All right, everyone, here's the uh, dough rolled up in balls. This is going to be our first batch. The dough really came together, man. I, I love that that bowl mixer. I'm never using the electric hand mixer again. So yeah, this is going to be our first batch. We're going to put them in the oven, 350 degrees for 10 minutes. And then we'll check them out. Alright everyone, so all the cookies are done. They're cooling now on these racks. I think they turned out really well. Now some of them have kind of a, a shine to them. And it may look like they're not baked all the way, but they are. I've tried one, it was awesome. They're baked all the way through, we're just gonna let them cool down, and yeah, that's the cookies. So, pumpkin spice chip cookies, I'd say were a success. Alright, everyone, so through the magic of video, it is now Saturday night. This is the pizza I got extra cheese, double mushrooms, double roasted red peppers, red peppers, excuse me. You can't go wrong with that combination, folks, at all. Alright, so we got some pizza on our plate. 
almost good to go. Now we need something to drink. So let's head out into the garage and let's see what we've got. All right. If I don't fall down these steps, that'll be great. All right, let's go over here to the fridge. Yeah, the TV up there. One of these days, man. Saturday Night Horror from the garage. All right, what do we have? Oh, my sweet Lord, look at that. Yes, sir. Alright, so we got an ice cold Coca Cola. We got enough to last for months, man. Alright, let's bring this back in the house. Say goodbye to the garage, and you see it's still light outside. So, yeah. Alright, here we are. Friday the 13th, Part 8. Chasing Takes Manhattan. 8 30 p.m., and there's still, there's still light outside. I hate that. Every light in the house is off. Let's go ahead and start the movie. It's not as dark as I wish it would be. I should have waited maybe another hour or two, but hey. Let's watch this movie, man. It's going to be a fun night. Cannot wait to get this started. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a freaking miracle. Tiger is out here with me during Saturday Night Horror. Now granted, he is sleeping just as peacefully as he can be. But at least he's out here. That's my little boy. That's my buddy. <laughs> So glad Tiger decided to come out here tonight. It's good to have a cat out here again. But that's my buddy. All right, everyone, the movie is done. And this was a fun night, man. I, I always have fun when I watch Jason Takes Manhattan. And I don't think that's ever going to change. I also really liked finally having another cat out there with me to watch the movie. I'm actually surprised Tiger hung out. Now, I did get up to get a drink and he left, but he did come back later on, so, I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> First time Tiger has ever stayed out there with me. But yeah, Jason Takes Manhattan. Like I said, um, my favorite movie, favorite horror movie of all time. A lot of people don't like it, and that's fine, but I enjoyed it. Uh, the way the movie starts out is awesome to me because it plays a song called Darkest Side of the Night, and that is what... <laughs> If you like 80s horror or just 80s music in general, look up Darkest Side of the Night by Metropolis. It is freaking awesome. So definitely start it out right. Another thing I really liked about kind of the intro to this movie is they show all these locations and characters in New York City and their locations and characters that they eventually go to and these characters they eventually meet near the end of the movie. So I thought that was pretty cool, man. It's uh, pretty much a precursor of where they're going to go in the city and the different kind of characters they're going to run into. So I thought that was pretty neat. So this movie, man, um, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of spoilers for it, just on the off chance you haven't seen it. But there are some things that I was, as I was watching, I kind of wrote them down to kind of talk about a little bit, uh, kind of nitpicking, being silly about it. First of all, like in all the uh, previous Jason, uh, previous Friday the 13th movies, Jason is resurrected again. Now at the end of the part seven, he was <laughs> drugged to the bottom of Camp Crystal Lake by Tina's father and they had a whole shack collapse on him. So when we start this movie, we see Jason's body at the bottom of Crystal Lake wrapped in chains with pieces of this building laying on top of him. He gets resurrected and comes back for his reign of terror. But my question is, if he's been at the bottom of Crystal Lake all this time, why didn't the authorities go and get his body? Why does why keep leaving him at the bottom of the lake? You know he's going to come back somehow, some way. So I got a question why the authorities never, ever went to get his body unless they think that everyone who survived the movies and told the tale of Jason was just absolutely crazy and they didn't believe it. I don't know. Uh, another thing I noticed is... We have, uh, before Jason kills anybody, we have a guy and his girlfriend on the boat, and a guy has a hockey mask. This hockey mask has the same marks, the same cut in the top that Jason's mask did. So it's like Jason's old mask. So I'm wondering, did this kid somehow get his hands on Jason's actual mask? Because it had the cut in the top from, the, uh, from an axe, had all the markings and kind of battle scars that Jason's actual mask had. So was that his real, his actual mask that this kid got a hold of? I don't know. Um, speaking of our cast, 
Oh, man. For me, a lot of times in horror movies, the cast is not likable and I want them all to die. And this was no exception. There were two people in this cast that I wanted to survive. And that was Julius and JJ. Uh, unfortunately, JJ was one of the first victims. Uh, Julius had the infamous rooftop boxing match with Jason, so those are the only two characters I really wanted to survive. The rest of them, I could not care less about. Uh, Uncle Charles was a prick, and I could not wait to see him die. I just wish he would have gone out even more brutally than he did. So yeah, not a, didn't really care for most of the cast. I didn't really care if they lived or died except for Julius and JJ. Another thing about this movie, Jason himself. Uh, this is the first time that I can remember Jason actually teleporting. We had different scenes where it seemed like he would do that. Someone would see Jason, like JJ saw Jason coming at her, so she turned around and run, and as soon as she turns around, he's right there in front of her. We had another one where a guy's crawl, climbing up a ladder to, I guess, the crow's nest area of the ship, and all of a sudden, Jason's on the ladder right below him, tosses him off. We have another scene where Uncle Charles runs into an abandoned building, runs up to the second floor, and all of a sudden Jason is right there even though he was just at the bottom. So yeah, um, first time I can remember Jason being able to teleport, which is it's kind of weird but kind of cool though. Another thing I had to question about this movie, and I'm going to go through, uh, I had a lot of questions watching this, but despite all these questions, it was a fun movie. How did nobody notice Jason lumbering around on that ship? That ship is a confined space, claustrophobic, narrow halls and corridors. You mean to tell me nobody, an entire high school graduating class plus chaperones, plus the ship staff, nobody noticed Jason lumbering around. I find that hard to believe, man. <laughs> uh, Jason's look in this movie I thought was badass. Part 7 and Jason Goes Jason Goes to Hell is my favorite look of all time, followed by Part 7. I like the look in this one because he had been underwater for so long and when he finally gets out of the water, you can tell he was underwater. His, his uh, skin is turned like a purplish blue, kind of pale, kind of bloated, decomposed. So I like the look of Jason in this movie. Uh, another thing I noticed... Some of, the, some of his victims in this movie made no effort to fight for their lives at all. They just kind of submitted. They saw him and just kind of just sat there. No, no, please. And just let him kill him. Screw that, dude, man. If I'm going out, I'm going out with a fight. But some of these victims just gave up immediately. And speaking of victims, I have to talk about my favorite kill. <laughs> my favorite kill in this movie was the sauna kill where he takes a hot rock from the sauna, buries it in the guy's stomach, it just holds it there till he dies. He catches, you know, his stomach starts to flame up a little bit. It's a simple kill, yet effective, and it was my favorite, man. I haven't seen that kill done in any other horror movie. Uh, the most brutal kill was definitely a young man named Wayne who had the uh, unfortunate incidence of being electrocuted then caught on fire while still alive so yeah rest in peace Wayne Jason also shows some intelligence in this movie which I liked uh, they're trying to radio the Coast Guard for help and Jason just rips the wires out uh, Jason also hits the fire alarm to get everyone kind of gathered in one place so he really wasn't the mindless zombie that he was in the uh, previous two movies he actually showed some intelligence and I liked that another thing I kind of Kind of a what if situation I thought of. Uh, the young man I just talked about, Wayne, who died, was actually walking around with a video camera recording things, and he actually got Jason on camera right before he died. Now, the ship that was on sunk, so I was like, what if they find the remains of the ship and they find Wayne's camera and they see Jason on film? And that kind of confirms that Jason Voorhees is real. That will kind of explain why in the next movie Jason goes to hell the FBI is going after him maybe they found Wayne's tape and like holy crap Jason Voorhees is real I don't know 80's New York um, this movie was in the 80's and 80's horror movies I just love the atmosphere the landscapes the, the, the cities the furniture the music everything about 80's I love and seeing 80's New York was awesome myself I've been in New York one time when I was a very small child I do not remember Anything about it, I remember seeing the Statue of Liberty, that's it. So, um, I'd like to go visit. 
but the way the world is right now, we're not going to. So yeah, I love the look of 80s New York. This movie was also supposed to be the very last Friday the 13th ever. The ending of this movie sees Jason drowning in toxic waste and transforming into a child again. That was supposed to be the death of Jason Voorhees. There was supposed to be no more Jason Voorhees after that. Of course we know that's not what happened, but yeah. When they made this movie, this was intended to be the death of Jason Voorhees. And speaking of Jason Voorhees, what is he? Is he human? Is he demon? Is he supernatural? What is he? Um, you, you see kind of the evolution in part two and three. Part two, he's just like a, I call him hillbilly Jason because he just looks like a hillbilly with a potato sack over his head. After that, he kind of changed into this mongoloid figure in three and four. And in part six, he's resurrected, and he's kind of a zombie, supernatural zombie. So what is Jason? What is he? Well, no, we might never know. Uh, Jason goes to hell, tried to explain it, but I don't know, man. What is Jason? Who knows? So overall, tonight was an awesome night. Tonight was a fun night. Tiger even joined me. It doesn't get better than that, but yeah. Jason Takes Manhattan, man. I'll never get tired of this movie. This is a movie that I can watch, like I said, every Saturday night, and I never get tired of it. If I get on a streak of seeing bad horror movies, I could put this one in, and everything's good. Like I said, my favorite horror movie of all time. A lot of people don't care for it, and that's fine, but I absolutely love it. I think it deserves more love, man. I think it deserves a lot more credit than it gets. So, I think I've talked and rambled on long enough. That's going to do it for this week, man. The return episode of Saturday Night Horror. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know I talked a whole lot of this episode, but I had a lot to say about this movie. I can't, I can't say enough good things about this movie. It's just good, cheesy, horror fun, 80s style. You can't go wrong with that, man. There's, you, you absolutely cannot go wrong with that. So with that being said, we're going to wrap this episode up. I'm not going to reveal what the next week's movies are anymore because most of the time I don't even know at the time I'm recording most of the time I don't decide until right then and there so whatever next week's movie is we'll find out when the video comes out so I just uh, want to say thank y'all for watching I appreciate y'all watching if you made it to the end you're freaking awesome yeah it's gonna do it guys so thank you for watching this episode of Saturday Night Horror if for some reason you have not watched Jason Takes Manhattan I highly recommend it if you're looking for a good time so with that being said y'all have an awesome weekend have an awesome week and I'll see you next week for the next episode of Saturday Night Horror y'all take care